think looking at the film we've made, um, there is a there's a definite spiritual connection to the book um, and the central character of the book, um, which is. I think the thing that took me a long time to understand was, was that it was about her, really. And even though it's very obvious, it's the, the advantage of hindsight or whatever that, that uh, makes me able, you know, that means I can say that now. But, but her as the molten core of the story and being, being with an alien viewpoint, um, an a, a, the lens, you know, her, the alien lens, looking at the world through an alien lens, um, and the opportunity that, that gives you as a filmmaker, you know, to sort of re-see things because she's seeing them for the first time. And then the challenge of that, you know, the difficulty of having to, um, once you commit to that perspective of, of, of telling a story from outside of everything else, you have to sort of stand, stand alone to, to find the right visual language to tell it. I had a feeling for it. And you, you do, you start with a feeling for something. It's like the feeling is a very strong, sort of palpable one. And um, you can't necessarily articulate it and you don't necessarily have an image for it, but you know that there's a feeling. And, um, you know, um, and then you're trying to get to that, but you really are in, in you know, it's not, a, it's, not a, it's not an obvious journey. So you have a kind of, you have an emotional compass, you know, that's the thing that you, um, that's your true north sort of thing all the way. But the story changes and the way you tell it uh, countless times. The first uh, uh, two drafts were quite illustrative, quite, and very good. They were the book. That was how, if you were going to do a direct adaptation, those are the, those, those, you'd work from those two drafts. Um, but I kind of, it's almost like I felt like I needed to see those two drafts now when I take my mind back. And again, this, I don't know, again, I, don't, I, can't, I, I can't tell you this is a trustworthy memory, but it's like, uh, I think it's almost like I needed to see them to dismiss them, to like, I needed to see them and, and think, uh, now, yeah, I don't want to make that. But it wasn't like I didn't want to make that, what do I want to make? I still wanted to make it, I just didn't want to make it. <laughs> so, so and, and then it became about that viewpoint and understanding that that was the, that was the real, um, that was what was so fertile in my mind. Walter Campbell, my co-writer and myself, were trying to put, find, we started to just find, kind of grope our way into the, into the story, um, we were trying to put, we were trying to create these these set pieces almost, uh, quite you know, put down these cards quite early on in the, in our writing, which were almost putting her in front of things that we as human beings would respond to in a certain way, and then we could film her. We could then, you know, we could look at that, and then we could spin our camera onto her and see what she felt. And of course, what we're looking at is not. We're not seeing our own face. We're not seeing, we're not reading her the way you'd read me or I'd read you in those circumstances. We wouldn't, um, there was no empathy. Um, so it was so, for instance, the beach scene is, is a good example of that. And it's in her dispassion, her, you know, t complete kind of disinterest. Um, that uh, we see her alienness. The hardest part of the film was to chart her drift, actually, because we didn't, we never wanted, it couldn't just become, a, it couldn't be about one thing. We didn't want her, we didn't want this kind of axiom where everything turned on this one moment where there was a eureka or an epiphany. It didn't, it didn't feel like it was the way things are, that, that, that there would be one moment and then everything would be different after it. Um, it, it felt like it needed to be, you know, a glimmer on a Monday, you know, um, a hunch on a Tuesday, you know, and the, the, the kind of a nascent sort of idea on a Wednesday, you know what I mean? And by Friday, she's thinking, maybe I'll, maybe I'll, you know, maybe I'll, um, maybe I'll get away from this, you know. If you were telling a story about somebody leaving their job, for instance, it would take, it would take, you know, that it would happen over, a, there'd be a drift towards that decision. Um, so we, we wanted to chart that drift, and that was, a, that was the, the single most difficult thing to achieve. There are certain things that are clear, that are kind of, dem that, are, that, are, that are dramatized, demonstrated, that, 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 you know, she falls in the street, she's, she's, she's 
pulled to her feet by human kindness. So there's a there's a moment there. There's a there's a uh, a jolt of some sort. You know, the the beach, the 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 recurring this idea of this res almost a residue of memory. You know, these are these are things you can dramatize. But then when you kind of put them down as pillars sort of thing, you, you then have to look at the connectivity between those things. And that's the difficult part. It's like, how do I get from that to that? How do we do that? What is that? And then you're charting a drift, and that's not just what you write, it's what you find. Uh, it's how you edit. It's how you re-edit, what you rewrite, what you reshoot, what you refine, what you re-edit. It never stops. It's a very, it's always in flux until you feel like you've, until you can almost uh, feel that curve is, is, is the right angle. You know? I was reluctant to have a, somebody familiar in the film. I, an early, my early thing was, you know, to shoot with somebody you wouldn't recognise. You know, that was kind of critical somehow. Like, I didn't want, you know, how do you tell... The credibility of the story was so important to us. How do we do this credibly? Um, and... And, and to be familiar with someone, I, that, that felt completely wrong. Um, so there was a period of time where I was really thinking about, you know, finding a barmaid in the Holloway Road or something, you know, somebody who would have, who would just be, who would just sort of, like a Robert Bresson character, you know, who would just sort of exist in the film. And then realizing you couldn't put a film together like this with, with nobody, it just, you know, the people were saying, forget it, you know, come back when you when you got somebody in mind. And Scarlet came about by thinking about Almost, I didn't want to see her. I wanted, I was happy to have her, but I didn't want to see her. What do we do? Do we put a mask on her? How do we do that? Well, we can't do that, so, you know. And I'd been testing out stuff. I'd shot some things with hidden cameras. I, had a, I did a thing of a woman running up a street with 57 hidden cameras, and that was a big jolt in my mind as well. I didn't even necessarily understand the connection at that point, but it was something I was very interested in, this idea of shooting in the real world. And it just became, it was a combination of like feeling like I didn't want to recognize the, the actor, and we were shooting about, it was about an actor, it was about a character, you know, it's, it's, it's also the conundrum of like, you've got, a, you've got an alien playing a, an actor, you've got an alien playing a character, and the character is played by Scarlett Johansson. It's, it's such a, you know, such a strange construction. Um, and, and being in the real world felt so correct, it felt, felt so real that if we were gonna look at human beings and, you know, uh, look at how human beings are and how we behave and uh, when we're not actually being watched, or when we don't know we're being watched. Um, how wrong to sort of have a light and a camera, how wrong, you know, how, how do we do this with no cameras and no lights? You know? How do we do it with no cameras, no lights and no star? It's so obvious in, hind in retrospect, it's like, put her in disguise, put someone we are familiar with in disguise, drop them in the real world and walk away, hide your cameras and walk away. And then it's all going on, it's all in play. You've got, you're, you're part of the lie, you're part of the conceit. Um, the, the, the Scarlet's preparation for the role, her, the, 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 the construction of the, of the wig and the makeup and the clothes and the, 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 the artifice of the accent and the immersion in the function of driving and hunting and all of that stuff, you know, it's equivalent to the story you're trying to tell. The method and the narrative are the same thing. And once that was understood, it was, it, that concept drove through the whole pro project. Everything was clear then. Where are you going? Oh, I ain't here. For what? For work? No, I need to go meet somebody. Are you going to meet someone? Aye. All right, well, thank you. Sure. But the aesthetic wasn't important to me on this film, actually. The aesthetic was that there was no aesthetic, actually. And, and everything, the word that we kept using was unadorned. It was, it was very important to me that everything felt unadorned. It felt like as it was, it should, it should, be, it should, it should be as it was. I'd challenge every light, you know, because, because I wanted daylight. And I wanted, and, if, and was there enough stop? Well, no, there wasn't. Are you sure there's not enough stop? Because I'd rather that than anything we're going to construct, you know? So, so unadorned was key in this film, and things that were witnessed and found, and the beauty would come from the way we put it together, I thought, and the truth of it, if there was any. If we captured that, then that would be the beauty of it. Everything's, everything, the, 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 the human life and activity is just going on, and, and once you kind of think, well, that's actually our set, it's just this perfect scenario that if you point your camera at a skip or a bus or a, you know, two people having a cup of tea on a, on a, on a, you know, at the table outside a cafe. They're all equally 
relevant to your story. You know, everything's everything's in play. Everything's um, everything's right. Everything's correct. It's all it's your it's the world that you're telling your story in. Is so you're judging everything. Whether you and then when you precast actors, because it's not like every person in the film is is photographed without their knowledge. I mean, there there are people in that we cast, obviously, and and um, you know, and then you've got to match that performance to the truth of the world as it is. So you then have this fantastic barometer for everything, um, and everything has to match that. You're trying to find a unity of all of those ingredients. You know, you have to. So if you cast, there are people in the film who are cast who can't look like they were cast. You know, somebody, a couple of people have said to me, who's cast and who's not cast? And to, that's, uh, let's, let's leave it at that. You know, that's, that's exactly where you want it to be because it means that, those, that, that the unity of those ingredients is, 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 is in check, you know. No girlfriend, really. Oh, I don't have a girlfriend at all. You're very charming. It's better. Yeah, sorted. Handsome face. Aye. Yeah. Thanks a lot, cheers. You think I'm pretty? Aye, you're gorgeous. Do you? Aye, definitely. Good. I've got a nice smile as well, whatever. Do I? Aye, big thing. You've got your smile. Aye. You have a nice smile on yourself. Cheers. Good. Be in that van driving around with her now, no problem, easily. You know, so it was a, you know, it had to had to be dragged away from that van, you know, because it was so, it was just giving her off. You know, the riches, the rewards of every day were incredible because of how we were shooting it. But um, the form of it, I don't think the form of it's relevant. I, I can't, I couldn't, I wouldn't have been able to anticipate the form of it, or even the story, what's left and what's been omitted I, I couldn't anticipate any of that but uh, but um so i don't know but the feeling is is i think close come to me you, you want everything in a film to be essential you know that that thought about um um you know the the, the you know the, the perfect machine is the one with the fewest parts you know it's like ha you know you don't start with the fewest parts you know you're trying to distill to the fewest parts Simplicity is something you end with. You don't start with it. You know, you, you get to it. You know, if you're lucky, you get to it. And and um, and uh, with with the regards to those sequences, they were just um, we wanted each time we returned to that space, we wanted to obviously feel like that you were you were learning something more about it each time you went there. But you do, you only need to be there three times in the film. And um, and I think the effect of that, the, 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 the strength of those sequences is to do with their, as much to do with the design as the, more so the context. It's more so that if you're coming into them from the world as it is, you, you're, 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 your senses are just being flooded with the reality of things. And then suddenly you're in this, it's like, the, you know, it's like, uh, it's like you've come to the edge of the world, you know, and suddenly it's just a cliff and a black and a drop, you know, and, and and it's quite shocking in 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 its uh, it's it's shocking and quite abrupt in 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 that and that's that's more real because it's the space is imbued with the reality of everything that's preceded it, you know what I mean? So, and, and we and we kind of understood that we wanted to stay away from alien stuff, you know, engineering and um, form, alien form, alien um, stuff, alien design, which I love in films. I love it. I love I like seeing that when it's done well. I just I didn't want to. I didn't. That wasn't what I wanted to do. You know, we wanted to, we wanted to create a space which felt alien, but you know, in the knowledge that you're limited by the fact that you're doing it using human imagination. So it's a, it's um, you know it's it's a it's a stupid task in a way because you're never really how can you how can you get to it? So then you're kind of in dream space or nightmare. You're then kind of you know you're then in a in a you're, tr you're trying to get to places which are kind of more uh, felt you know than thought. They're more kind of the less you bypass the intellect, that's the kind of idea of it, that you get to it, you're kind of trying to kind of get to the inner consciousness of things, you know. Paul Watts is of the editor, he's a fantastic editor, and he, he um, we didn't want to dwell, we didn't, we felt like, it felt very important to us when we were editing the film, that it was, 
it, 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 I just I just kept wanting to come to ideas, just go from idea to idea to idea, just keep just pushing forward, never never feeling like you were you were dwelling anywhere. And 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 people may think the film is slow, regard, despite that, but. Um, you know, it was about to make make the point, to, to to make the point and move on, make the point and move on. So we we were certainly never kind of luxuriating in um, atmosphere. We were trying. It was very important to keep moving forward. You know, that's how, you know that's that's editorial. A lot of those choices are editorial. There's a lot. You know, there's stuff that's cut out. There's there's truncations. There's, but you never want to. You, you want. To, you know, it, it needed to feel like it was always moving forward, and it was a, it was just step to step to step to step. And sometimes. Things are moving maybe quicker than um, they might. They might do more uh, conventionally, or they might be better for moving. Maybe they should move slower in certain places. But, but um, it felt like we were kind of just. We wanted to be in the present tense with her somehow. We wanted everything to be happening to her and to us simultaneously. I remember the feeling from watching that famous John Renoir film, The Grand Illusion, and I remember that quite clearly when we were. I think I can't remember when we were, whether we were writing or editing at that point. I'm not sure, but probably writing. But it was to do with you remember in the Grand Illusion. There's a sort of you're in the you're in the prison for so long in the film, and you're with them. And then when they escape, and I just remember the real feeling of being you know in that meadow and crossing, and you know they go to a barn and they crack an egg and they sleep on a bale of hay and on they go and you know wave to a bloke on a cart and stuff. And, I, and I'm, I'm there with them. I was there with them because I was in the prison with them. And suddenly I'm, the fresh air's on my face too. And I, and I, I love the construction of things like that. I love, the, I love, um, I love that uh, you know, relationship to pictures that you know, they're so, so sensory. And, um, and, and I, that was definitely in my mind when we were editing, in terms of being with her and then fleeing with her, you know. I'll tell you, my first thoughts about music for the film was no music until he plays her a record. That was, that was an early draft, was that there's no music until she meets the guy in the bus, they go back to his place, what happens, happens, he makes a dinner and stuff, and then he puts up, there's a scene, I was, I, we had a scene where we wrote where he, where he played her a record. And then it was like, well, what record does he play? You know, what do you play an alien? You know, what was it? And, you know, then it was just, and then the, the choice became so, um, deliberate, you know, so arch, so like loaded, so important, you know, and uh, that was terrible, sort of cul-de-sac then. Because, but I was convinced I was that if we can experience everything as she does, then let's then let's be denied music until she hears it, until it, and then let's have music. So for the last twenty minutes, and of course, then it was like great. Also, music budget's tiny. That's going to work. We'll have twenty minutes of music instead of ninety minutes of music or whatever. Um, so that felt like a good concept, and everybody hold, you know. We all kind of hung our hat on that. And then, of course, when you're putting the film together, it doesn't work like that. And actually, it didn't work. It needed music sooner, and it needed music needed to be an ingredient in a completely different way than I've imagined. And actually, that music that had such importance in, on the page became the, the opposite. In fact, it was like, what would be on the radio? You know, it should just be like heavy rotation, you know, whatever's on the radio while you're washing up. It's not a choice. In fact, turn the radio on now and see what's on the radio. That's what should be on the radio. And that's kind of how, that sort of is what's on the radio. It's, it's so interesting about the process of making anything. It's that you, you, on the one hand, you're completely attached to what you're doing. And on the other hand, you have to remain completely unattached to it. You just don't know when things are no longer going to be important to you. So it's all in orbit all the time. And I remember Pete Rabin, the music producer who found Mika, who came into the, when it was, we were talking earlier about the music um, uh, like I was saying, I like to cut dry for a long time, and then, and then finally he kind of knocks on the door and says, "Come on, let's just get some music involved and just put, play a couple of tracks, cut, put a couple of things in." And we looked and we're looking at it, and it's not right for obvious reasons. But you're sort of, you just suddenly, okay, music's now in the room, and um, and he played something. I can't remember what it was now, but we tried it right. At the, he played it somewhere, and I said, "Try that right at the beginning." We tried it right at the beginning, and then it was like what I got really excited about was the kind of the the, the capitalised idea of. The aliens are coming, you know, like, let's start like the fucking aliens are coming. Let's not pretend they're not. They are, you know, let's be scared of a white dot. That's that's great. Let's start like that. And that stayed. And that was Mika's starting point. In fact, the first time we we met within a minute, we were looking at the white dot on the screen talking about it. And um, and then the music was constructed over many months. It wasn't it was just Mika went on the same journey I went on. It was another part of my journey, but for her it was equivalent to the journey I'd been on or Walter had been on or 
uh, uh, Tom Debenham had been on, or Paul had been on, or anyone had been on. We were all, it was like in for a penny, in for a pound. You were just like, we were here till it works. And, um, and, it was, uh, and it's the alchemy of trying to make all of those ingredients woven, you know, in, indistinguishable from one another, re completely interreliant. No one thing more present than the, than the other. They all, they're all, it's, an, it's, a, it's a symphony of all of those ingredients. It's an or you're orchestrating all of those ingredients to, to point in the same direction, you know, and they have different calibrations and functions, but, you know, you stay with it until it all feels kind of balanced. I'm so interested in, personally, in the form of film. I love the form of film, like sculpture. I like the idea of like, the shape of it. I can sometimes I imagine standing away from it and seeing the shape of it. Like I could walk around it. I want to see what the shape of it is, and um, so you become very locked to form, and you know, form and content and everything being one thing somehow. It all just becoming one thing, um, you know. And because of the subject matter, because of what it is, and the, like I was saying earlier, the fact that it has to stand alone and apart. You know, good or bad, it has to stand apart. It has to stand separate and say this is this is this is this point of view. You know, this is what it is. Good, you know, like it or loathe it. It's going to stay what it's got to be consistent. I mean, I, I always loved the, um, you know, that frequency in, in 2001 in the, the, the monolith. I always loved the, the idea of that frequency and just, I don't know what that is. I kind of suspect it. I've read different dissertations about it. I have my own thoughts about what it might be, but it, it's, it is in my head to this day with here I am mentioning it, you know, um, because of the fact that it remains alien. And if you're going to make a film about an alien, then make a film about an alien. So I like, keep remain alien, keep it keep it alien.